All right, I am back with another video, and today we're doing something very different. This is the first of my modded build series. Now, I know this is going to come with some concern, as a lot of people appreciate the fact that my channel basically exclusively showcases vanilla builds for console players. However, as this is a Sunday series, which is relatively new for the channel, it's not we've kind of just started only doing videos on Sundays now, uh, you will still be getting three builds that are completely vanilla per week. This is just a new thing that I'm kind of trying out because honestly, the level of creative freedom that these mods are giving me is amazing and I think you're really, really going to like this. This is also a build request. I have been asked both in YouTube comments and over on my Discord, if you want to go check that out, to create a pirate themed build. Now, this was always possible in Vanilla BG3. A little bit of Bard, a little bit of Rogue, you've basically got it. But with what I have for you today, I think you're going to really enjoy it. Now, I don't want to spoil anything right away, but I've got some interesting kind of backstory and justifications for the levels I'll be taking for this, but Oh, I'm really excited to show you what I have cooked up today. And let me just tell you, this build is very, very strong. And I mean very strong. It might be one of the most powerful builds I've ever made. And that's not just because, oh, you know, he's used mods uh, to make himself overpowered. No, 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 no. Like, this could, this could technically be possible in, like, regular D&D. Because all of the mods I'm using today are are classes that exist in D&D 5e, so this can be made either in this game or in tabletop with a similar sort of theming, just slightly different mechanics. But this build is so fun. It, it becomes really powerful, but not in a way that feels like you've broken the game. You'll see what I mean. But anyways, without further ado, let's actually get into the build. I'll get a little bit more into the backstory stuff a bit later. Now, we're going to be kicking things off with a bit of a weird one here. We're starting with Artificer. Now, I want to take a one level dip in Artificer. This is optional, but I wanted to start with it, because this is going to give us something that I think is quite important for the build, Firearms Proficiency, because yes, I actually want to use kind of like blunderbusses and flintlock pistols that pirates were kind of known for, alongside, you know, their, their you know, cutlasses and and dueling swords. So we're going to be kicking things off with Artificer. This is going to give us a few things. Like I said, firearms proficiency. Uh, we're going to have proficiency with light armor, medium armor, and shields, although we're not going to be using any of those. This build actually does use clothing, but it's also going to give us access to things like constitution saving throw proficiency, which is actually going to be really nice for this build because we do use concentration based spells. And you'll see what I mean in a little bit. And I kind of like favoring this as this guy just being quite intelligent. Like, yes, he is a pirate who sails this high sees and all that, but he's also a pretty smart dude, so he kind of likes to tinker with his own guns a little bit. I quite like that, but mainly we're here for firearms proficiency, the rest of it is just a bonus. And speaking of bonuses, we do get a few cantrips at this level. We're already going to be getting Mending, Light, and Minor Illusion, but we can pick up a couple of more that I think that would be nice for this build, specifically Booming Blade and Green Flame Blade. Because these are going to be some really nice cantrips that are going to be able to augment our melee attacks because we are going to be using swords with this build. And Booming Blade and Green Flame Blade are just really, really nice enemies we can pick these up now and not using our multi-class, which we're going to be getting in a minute. So we might as well grab these here. And as for our ability scores, let me just quickly set these up. Uh, do, 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 very quickly. Yeah, so we want this size it'll go. This at about 16. Uh, that about there, and that about there. Perfect! So, let me go over the ability scores real quick. Strength and Dexterity are both at 8. We don't need Strength, we're more of a Dexterous Fighter. And Dexterity is at 8 because, yes, we are using the Gloves of um, Dexterity to bump this up. I didn't want to use these here, however... It was kind of the best way to kind of make this build in the end. It lets me put these points into other stats, which I think also makes sense for the build. And it's going to leave our dexterity at a really, really nice score without having to worry about it. Uh, but if you wanted to go with something a bit, if you wanted to have some dexterity to start with, which I could totally understand, maybe bump your constitution down to a 14, put that dexterity up as well, maybe bump your charisma down. Something along these lines. Start with this stat spread until you get the gloves of dexterity in Act 1, and then change it up as I show here. Uh, just quickly put these back. Nope, that wasn't correct. That is. So, 
Dexterity is at 8. Again, we're bumping that up. Constitution is at 16. This is going to give us a decent health pool and a way to better maintain concentration on our spells. This and our Constitution saving for proficiency are going to be amazing for what we're trying to do. Intelligence is at 16. It is our main spell casting modifier and we're going to want this pretty high. Wisdom is at 12. We are a pirate that sails to 7 seas and that comes with a lot of challenges that will require wisdom to overcome and just general worldly knowledge. So I wanted to get at least a little bit of it here. And Charisma at 14. We're a pirate. We're a suave, swashbuckling... Uh, you know, fencing, you know, like, romancing, I don't know. I'm kind of, this is all kind of inspired by Pirates of the Caribbean and, like, Jack Sparrow. The character's name in the game is Jack Daw. So, you know, I kind of just wanted a little bit of all that kind of, like, charismatic stuff. Because I want this guy to be the face of the party. And I feel like, and, Char and charisma is actually going to have importance to this build later. It's not just a flavor stat. Trust me, it'll make sense. As for our skill proficiencies, I have gone with the charlatan background, although it doesn't say so here. Because for some reason, when I try to respec uh, already existing characters with mods, it doesn't really change the background properly for some reason. So here it's showing the folk hero proficiencies, but charlatan is absolutely what I would go for here to give you the appropriate proficiencies for being a pirate. Uh, we also have stealth as well, because this is a wood half elf character, which is a bit strange for a pirate, but I will explain myself later. So you can pick up a few other things. Uh, I would say arcana could make sense, but I quite like investigation. Perception is also a really good one. Probably nature would also make a lot of sense. We already have decent stats in other places, so, you know, pick up whatever you like, but charlatan would absolutely be perfect for this build, so make sure you pick that up. At level two, we're immediately going to be leaving. Artificer. Repeating shot would be nice, but I just have things that I want from other levels more. But if you think a, if you want to drop a level of another class that we're taking and put it into this class and get repeating shot, you absolutely could. But, but the fire rum isn't exactly the main focus of this build, it's just a nice supplement. But you'll see what I mean. I kind of want to get the other features from our main class as quick as we can. So, let's jump over to Wizard. Wizard is going to be our main class for this build. Now, you could probably already know where I'm going to go with this, so let's quickly get to it. As a wizard, we're going to be able to pick three cantrips. Now, I mainly just kind of want to pick flavor cantrips here, as again, this build isn't really taking magic spells that are going to be made for offense. It's taking spells that are more going to be made for uh, making us a bit tricky, basically, in and out of combat, and kind of making us harder to hit in general. But I mainly just want to kind of get roleplay and flavor and utility spells here, but feel free to pick up some offensive options if you like. So, friends... Mage Hand, and honestly, Prestidigitation, because we actually have it. Uh, Friends is going to allow us to gain advantage on Charisma checks against non-hostile creatures, amazing. Mage Hand just has a ton of utility that you can figure out throughout the game, and Prestidigitation allows us to perform minor magical tricks that, l that light or snuff out fire on some items and weapons, and cleans the ground surfaces or creatures. So basically, if you get dirty and bloody and muddy, you could just clean yourself off, which I feel like this character would absolutely do. But if you want some more offensive options, I could easily recommend things like Sword Burst, Lightning Lure, uh, Gust could also be a fun one. There's a ton of different things you could do here, but I quite like picking up these three utility cantrips. On to spells, and there's quite a few that we're going to want slash need. Mage Armor is a requirement for this build, as we are wearing clothing, as I decided to kind of use a piece of armor here that's clothing to patch up our constitution a little bit to, to make it a bit higher for our concentration saves it's not actually required since we have a decent constitution stat anyway so you can swap that around if you like but i'm going with mage armor for now as for our ever spells shield is absolutely important i'm kind of turning this into kind of a magic duelist less about hitting with ranged defensive spells and more about being able to make ourselves very tricky to hit so shield is literally the perfect spell for that instantly boosting our ac and making it so we take no damage from magic missile it's going to make us very hard to hit in combat there's a few others we can pick up too i quite like absorb elements it's another reaction based spell uh if we if we don't have a chance to use shield because our opponent rolled too high and they're using an elemental attack on us or maybe something that's an aoe that we can't dodge absorb elements will allow us to take on that elemental damage and re and deal it back as an extra d6 of damage on our next melee attack so that's pretty cool there's also a few other things we can pick up that i think would just be kind of nice for flavor fine familiar we are a pirate so getting a little uh raven familiar that kind of acts like a parrot would be absolutely great unseen servant just because we probably are that type of guy allowing us to create an invisible mindless shapeless and medium force that can perform simple tasks at your command a bit similar to mage hand but a bit more advanced and then finally the last 
um, kind of spell can be whatever you like. It really doesn't matter. In fact, with the subclass that we're going for, Magic Missile would probably make a lot of sense. And then for our prepared spells, I'll leave it at what the game has selected for us. And finally, at Wizard Level 2, we get to pick our subclass. And here it is. Blade Singing. I'm finally doing a Blade Singer build, everybody. But why a Pirate Blade Singer? Let me get into the backstory for this build. You're going to love this one. <clears throat> so let me just pull up the document so I make sure I don't forget anything <laughs> because I actually wrote this down. So our character is the Pirate Lord Jackdaw who came from an interesting beginning. He is a half-elf who was born to a human father and an elven mother. His father, who he's never actually met, was a incredible pirate sailing every single sea his skill at managing a ship was unmatched and his crew became legendary him alongside himself as being some of the most ruthless and ingenious pirates to ever sail and because of his ingenuity and his just general brilliance his father was one of the only non-elves to make it to the Isle of Evermeet. For those of you that don't know, the Isle of Evermeet is an elves-only island. Very, very few people are ever who are non-elves are ever permitted to go there. And this is a kind of place where elven society is really prospering, and they have big exports of like rare things, including elven adventurers. And as such, humans and other races aren't really allowed there even going as far as the seas themselves being magic magically kind of altered to prevent entry, accidental or otherwise. But this guy, Jack Dawes' father, was so good at being able to navigate the oceans that he was able to reach the isle. And it was there that he met Jack Dawes' mother, an elven blade singer warrior who, despite almost chopping his head off when they first met, secretly wanted to explore and leave the island and see what else is out there because she'd been sheltered due to her family life her whole life. This is very, very in-depth because I'm very proud of this character. And all in all, he ended up kind of sneaking around the island with her, coming back and forth, kind of with a secret route that he'd managed to map out to the island that got past the elves' defenses. And eventually, he, you know, and and then left. Uh, when I say, you know, they basically, Jack Dorr was conceived shall we say and he actually left only this time never to return eventually who we now know as the pirate jackdaw was born and was trained in the blade singing arts by his mother before when he kind of was old enough to know she told him about his father and as such eventually the stories of his father's exploits reached him either through his mother or through tales passed on through the elves who came back and forth from the island and he decided to go out looking for him himself and many, many years later, our current character is now, in of his own, a rather legendary pirate chasing his father's shadow. And when he came to his main stomping ground, Baldur's Gate on the Sword Coast one day, he got picked up by the Nautiloid in the opening cutscene, the tadpole was injected into his head, and he has to find his bearings once again. And the reason I kind of wanted to go with a Blade Singer is because... Well, obviously I wanted to build a Blade Singer, but the fact that their kind of like way of fighting is almost as much of a performance and a dance as it is a way of combat, that kind of reminded me of the way pirates fight, how they step and, you know, kind of parry and maneuver and repost and have a ton of panache and flair to their combat style. So I thought, you know what? It's a fun twist on the Blade Singer. Maybe this guy has the basic fundamentals of Blade Singing at his core fighting style, but in the end, mixes it with kind of the roguish panache of being a pirate to create a whole new style of blade singing. And I think that sounds awesome. So we're going to go with blade singing for now. And for those of you who are thinking swashbuckler, stick around. So with blade singing, we're going to get a few things. Now, number one, we're going to get training in war and song. We gain proficiency with light armor and we gain proficiency of one type of one-handed melee weapon of our choice. You also gain proficiency in performance if you don't already have it. Perfect. We're also going to be getting Blade Song. We can invoke an elven magic called the Blade Song, gracing us with supernatural speed, agility, and focus as long as you aren't wearing medium armor or heavy armor or using a shield. So we're going to be kind of restricted to basically just dueling with a one handed weapon for now. Uh, and we can trigger Blade Song as a bonus action, and it's going to give us a bunch of things that I'll get into later. But there's going to be buffs to our AC, our movement speed. 
a bunch of really cool things. I think it even boosts our concentration saving throws by our intelligence modifier, which is really nice. There's a ton of stuff that Blade Song does for us, but I mainly like it for the AC, uh, which you'll see uh, is how that's going to work out as we go. At level 2, and we also get some spells as well. Continuing with, with our level 1 spells, not too much to see here. Let's pick up something interesting. We could do... Hmm. What would be interesting for a pirate here? I don't know, something like Color Spray. You know, kind of a dirty fighting tactic of like pocket sand. <laughs> I don't know. Probably not a very useful spell. But I can also see Charm Person being quite on theme here. Being able to charm people in combat to kind of stop attacking you for a moment. I think that makes sense for a you know, very kind of like a in like a pirate fighter, I guess. We also get to pick our proficiency, like I said, and as because we start off started off as a uh, artificer, we have quite a few proficiencies already, and the fact that we are a wood elf gives us some as well, I believe. But uh, we are mainly going to be going for rapier proficiency because rapiers are my weapons of choice for this build. Uh, scimitars, short swords, long swords could all work, but I actually quite like the idea of kind of changing the, the traditional blade singer long sword for a rapier with this kind of pirate style. And again, we get to prepare an extra spell here, but I think I'll keep it the way we have it. At wizard level 3, we're going to get level 2 spells, and we have quite a lot to choose from. There are a lot of extra ones here that kind of come as part of uh, 5e spells, which is the mod I am using. Uh, by the way, all mods will be linked in the description, but there's a couple of, of kind of vanilla spells that I think would work perfect for this build. Mirror Image is going to make us even harder to hit, allowing us to create three illusory duplicates of ourselves that distract attackers. Each duplicate increases our armor class by three, but whenever we evade an attack, a duplicate disappears. This, stacked with our other AC buffs like Blade Song and Shield, are basically going to make us impossible to hit in most circumstances. And Misty Step to be able to teleport around the battlefield, because that just makes sense. Like the whole idea of you kind of pirouetting and moving out of, you know, melee range, only to then teleport and appear somewhere else to be able to strike from behind. I love it. it. There's so much interesting flavor of combining wizard spells with the idea of a, like, roguish fighting style. It's brilliant. I absolutely love it. And we will prepare uh, said spells like so. At wizard level 4, we're going to be picking up our first feat. And I think I want to just bump up our intelligence here, getting this as high as we can. Because we're going to want our spell save DCs and all that sort of thing to be pretty high. But it's entirely up to you. As for our cantrips, we can pick another one at this level, and I quite like picking up maybe something like Thunderclap or Lightning Law or Shape Water. Would make sense for a pirate, I suppose. There's a ton of different options here. Pick whenever you like. Uh, I kind of like Lightning Law to pull enemies in towards you. I think that could be quite fun. We do also get some other level 2 spells at this point, and I think a couple of good options are here. Something like if you wanted to get some offensive spells, and I think I will start picking up some offensive spells at this point. So something like Scorching Ray and maybe even Hold Person could be great. Scorching Ray just being a pretty standard uh, spell. Again, I'd rather be using the pistol for flavor, but if you wanted to pick up some fire spells to maybe get things like the Pyro, hit, pyro Quickness hat online, that could also work. There's also things like Blur, Cloud of Daggers would actually probably make a bit of sense here, but it's another concentration spell and I don't want too many of those until we start getting to the better concentration spells. But again, you can pick up whatever you like here it really doesn't matter uh, as for our prepared spells i'll go with something like this perfect at wizard level five we're going to be able to grab level three spells and of course there's two that i immediately want to grab haste and counter spell haste is going to increase our ac give us an extra action give us an extra in action to allow us to attack again and you know give us even more movement speed which is going to be more relevant than you think for this build haste is absolutely going to take this build over the edge we're getting it at total level six so a level later than usual but it's really going to make us quite strong and counter spell is another way to kind of prevent ourselves from being hit because even though our ac is high we can still get hit by things with big aoe effects so counter spell allowing us to shut down certain spells basically nullifying them all together to also prevent ourselves from being hit makes perfect sense and is always really good for helping out the whole team not just yourself so we're going to slap these two on And at wizard level 6, we're going to be getting Blade Singer's extra attack we can now make an extra attack whenever we make a weapon attack or cast a cantrip 
So, whenever we cast a cantrip or make a me melee weapon attack, we can also do one or the other again, which is really, really nice. This is going to give us a ton of utility and different ways of enabling really interesting strategies with this build. You'll see this combat stuff when we get into the combat footage and all that, which I would have shown a little bit of, so you may already know where I'm kind of going, but trust me, this is so fun. I wish we had this stuff in the base game. As for our other level 3 spells, there is actually some extra spells added from the mod that I want to pick up. Thunderstep is going to allow us to teleport ourselves away, as well as an ally as, as well, to an unoccupied space, causing a thunderous boom within 3 meters of the space we left. So, if we're surrounded by enemies, we can suddenly get out of danger while also doing damage at the same time. Absolutely brilliant. And as for our other big level 3 spell, I mean there's a bunch of stuff here that you could get that would be interesting, but I'm just gonna, for the sake of, you know, simplicity, pick up the tried and true fireball. Again, nothing wrong with having a fireball. Maybe not the most on theme thing, but hey, it's fireball. Why not? Now, now that we've kind of gotten our extra attack and such, I'm gonna get into our next multi-class, because there is another one. And I think it's going to absolutely do this build justice when you see how these two things synergize, both thematically and mechanically. We're going with Rogue. Rogue is going to give a sneak attack. We are going to be using finesse weapons with rapiers. So sneak attack is going to go off for us here, which is great. We're also going to be able to get a cut, an extra skill proficiency and two expertise. And I quite like picking up, let's grab uh, probably persuasion. And we could put our expertise in that, so we are very charismatic. And also, I would say performance expertise might be quite nice. Unfortunately, I don't think we're actually proficient with an instrument. Uh, but, I don't know, it feels right thematically, but obviously there's better things you could go with mechanically, like stealth. Sleight of hand, actually, would probably make sense. You know what, we'll go with that. At Rogue Level 2, we're going to be able to dash, hide, and disengage as a bonus action. Absolutely perfect for this build for being able to get out of tricky situations or be able to move across the battlefield quickly if we need to. But we actually have so many movement speed buffs that I don't think Cunning Action Dash is going to come up nearly as much as you'd think. Nor will Disengage as we'll have another way of being able to get out of combat without being hurt. You'll see what I mean. Because this wouldn't be a pirate build if we didn't pick up Swashbuckler. Swashbuckler actually has some really unique synergies with Bladesong, especially thematically, because Swashbuckler is described as, um, well, your method of fighting looks almost like a performance, training with the art of the blade, relying on speed, elegance, and charm in equal parts. So, blade singing is a combat is a combat style that's like a dance and a performance, and so is the swashbuckler pirate fighting style. They actually synergize so interestingly. Yes, getting the pirate subclass at total level 10 may feel a bit off for you, so maybe you want to pick this up sooner if you want the pirate theming a little bit earlier, but honestly, I feel like the blade singing stuff is more worth it. This is just making an already good build even better better because we're going to get a few things our fancy footwork during your turn if you make a melee attack against a creature moving away won't provoke an opportunity attack this is going to allow you to move in and get out of combat whenever you need to especially with the amount of attacks we're going to have through haste uh you know um extra attack all that good stuff as well as being able to use cantrip attacks with this trust me this is going to have some really interesting synergy as well as our rakish, rakish Audacity, Initiative. We can give ourselves a bonus to our initiative rolls equal to our Charisma modifier, allowing us to set up Haste and Bladesong right away at the start of the turn without needing to uh, get hit first, which is very, very nice. And finally, f the full Rakish Audacity passive. We do not need advantage on the attack roll to use our sneak attack against a creature if we are within five feet of it, and no other creatures are within five feet of, of us. So we're going to be adding our sneak attack damage way more than usual, which is awesome. Uh, and then all other rules for sneak attack still apply, but this just means we're going to be able to consistently get more damage out of our weapon attacks, which is awesome. 
Now, I think the best thing we could do, even though we could grab another feat here, I want to go back to Bladesinger, because going back to Bladesinger, we're still a full wizard at the end of the day, we're going to get more spell slots, and we'll still get another feat at the end of the day, being an 8-1-3 split. So, let's do that. At level 7 Bladesinger, we are going to be able to pick up level 4 spells, and there is a couple that I immediately want to pick up. Fire Shield is a non-concentration spell that allows us to wreath our body in flames or ice that shed light in a 3 meter radius, provide resistance to fire or cold damage depending on what you choose, and if we get attacked by melee, we retaliate with the damage that we have chosen. I mean, for a build that is going to be in melee combat quite a lot and, you know, retaliate against melee, melee attacks automatically, it just makes sense. So I really wanted to pick this up here. And then your last spell can kind of be whatever you like. It really doesn't matter. We have some extra level 4 options here, like Summon Elemental and Psychic Lance. I'm not even going to try and pronounce that first bit. Uh, there's other things here that you can pick up as well. Life Transference, Mel's Minute Meteors. There's also things like Conjure Minor Elemental if you wanted to pick that up. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what I would choose, but Greater Invisibility would be a very nice, stealthy, tricky spell that could even work in combat for us. So you know what? If you're not concentrating on haste, this could be more of a utility option, but it could also be a great combat starter as well. I mean, we are a rogue at the end of the day. And finally, at Wizard level 8, we do get to pick up another feat. And I would say let's bump up that intelligence to the max. I mean, it just makes the most sense. It's going to help out with space, spell save DCs. It's going to help out with our Blade Singer features. It's going to do a lot of stuff, so we're going to want this maxed out. We also do get to get some, level, some more spells at this point up to level 4. And again, it's entirely up to you what you want to pick. It really doesn't matter. We have pretty much the majority of everything that we would want at this point. So, I mean, things like Lightning Bolt could be fun. Maybe, you know, let's pick up Summon Elemental. Why not? But they're not really on theme, so I'll probably just leave them out for now. But again, if we can also learn, you know, spells from scrolls and such like that. So your spell repertoire is going to be pretty large. And that is the build. Overall, you're going to have a ton of versatility with this build. The ability to enter and exit combat pretty much for free, making yourself virtually impossible to hit through things like Bladesong, giving you a ton of defenses and such like that, as well as being able to cast various spells, get sneak attack up, get haste up, uh, be able to use things like Booming Blade and Green Flame Blade, it makes this build just works. It has a ton going for it. You're going to be able to maintain concentration really easily because even if you do get hit, your constitution saves are so high. There's just so much going on here. It's hard to explain exactly without getting into combat, uh, but trust me, you, when you see the combat footage, you'll absolutely understand what I'm going for here. So let's get into the equipment. I'm just quickly going to turn off voices because I was like, oh yeah, let's record in this place. And then the voice volume, then there's just people talking all over the place. There we go. That's a bit better. Let's get into the equipment. Oh, I'm so professional. Right, so we have a bunch of things going on for us here. Namely, let's get into the weapon. My main weapon that I want you to go for in the end game is the Duelist's Prerogative. This is already a pirate weapon. It's literally, you get it from a pirate in the game. So I thought it made perfect sense, especially since we're kind of going for a dueling playing style. It just made a ton of sense. It's a level, th it's a plus three weapon with a necrotic damage bonus. You score a critical hit when rolling a 19 or higher, and you gain an additional reaction per turn, which can be used for all sorts of things. And whenever we hit with a melee weapon, we can use our reaction to deal additional necrotic damage equal to our proficiency bonus, and it comes with a couple of extra things as well. We can challenge someone to a duel as a bonus action, which makes perfect sense for a pirate, challenging them to attack only us, which again, they're not really going to be able to hit, and we can inflict bleeding whenever we hit the target as well. Well, as well as Duelist Enthusiasm, a bonus action attack that we can use once per turn, so we're going to be able to deal out a ton of damage. But as for some weapons I would recommend in the meantime, the Sword of Screams that you can pick up in Act 1 with that deals extra psychic damage could be really nice, and in Act 2 the Infernal Rapier could do really really well, or just any generic plus 1 or 2 Rapier could do the job until you pick this thing up in Act 3. Again, I'll have a bunch of equipment listed in the description below that you can pick up, links to the wiki and all that. And also for our ranged weapon, I want a flintlock pistol. You can pick up these from various merchants. They are automatically added to the game via the Artificer mod. And this one is just a basic plus one weapon, but you can wield it in the main hand or the off hand. You can even dual wield these if you want to. I haven't done that in this build, but you absolutely could. And it provides a pretty powerful ranged attack, a 1d10 plus 5 damage. Fits really, really nicely on this build thematically. And again, since we can basically disengage from melee combat whenever we like, we can do sword swings, cantrip 
attacks with Booming Blade, move out of combat completely for free thanks to our swashbuckler feature, and then shoot them at a distance with a gun. It feels so pirate-like, it's brilliant. Uh, yeah, as you can see here, does a decent amount of damage. Uh, as for our equipment, let's get into it. We have the Hood of the Weave here. This is just going to give us a bonus to our spell save DC and attack rolls. So if we wanted to use things like Hold Person, Fireball, uh, all that good stuff, we absolutely can. We could do so with a bit more efficiency. But you could also pick up something like the Diadem of Arcane Synergy if you like to be able to add your spellcasting modifier. There's a bunch of things you could do with this build differently. The Hood of the Weave just kind of felt right to me with this build. Uh, but you could pick up a ton of other stuff if you like. I'm kind of trying to just recommend different equipment in builds because I always recommend very similar things. But I'm trying to shake things up a bit if I can. As out for our cloak, we have the Cloak of Displacement. At the beginning of the wearer's turn, the cloak activates, granting enemies disadvantage on attack rolls that target the wearer, and this effect lasts until we take damage. With our already existing high AC and disadvantage on attack rolls against us, we're virtually never going to be hit. Uh, as for our uh, clothing here, I've gone with the Enraging Heart Garb to give us a plus two to constitution, and with... Again, because I wanted our constitution to be really high for a decent chunk of HP, despite our wizard levels, and very decent concentration saves. And as you can see, if I cast Mage Armor, our AC goes to a very decent 18. But remember, plus 2 from Haste. I believe it's plus 4 or 5 from Bladesong. In fact, I can show you. Yep, a plus 5 from Bladesong. Adding on Haste. Yeah, a 25 AC before disadvantage on attack rolls and even using something like let's get mirror image up 34 <laughs> yeah if you wanted to you can make yourself virtually impossible to hit but i found even the 25 was more than enough and again that's not even taking into account shield which can push this even higher so yeah you're virtually never going to be hit so if you feel like the constitution buff isn't exactly necessary that you can absolutely swap this out for something else maybe some light armor if you feel like that would be good something maybe like the elegant studded leather or even the ballist armor if you want to be a little bit evil with it to get uh, vulnerability on piercing damage which would be great for this build there's a ton of different options you can go for this is just kind of a nice act two option for you and of course, as I mentioned before, we're going for the Gloves of Dexterity to set our Dexterity to 18. And also I've gone with the Bone Spike Boots, giving us a plus one to our armor class of saving throws. As long as we are not wearing armor or holding a shield, we're not. We gain uh, an increased jump distance and we get a new jump that we can use called Brutal Leap that can possibly knock enemies prone. This is basically just going to give us a bit more maneuverability if we're dueling on our ship on the high seas. We could jump up to the netting, climb the mast, all that good stuff with that extra jump distance. And... Because it works for this build, I've decided to go with a little bit of a, um, uh, a kind of an elemental set here. So, with the Necklace of Elemental Augmentation, whenever we can uh, add our spellcasting modifier to the damage of cantrips, this includes Booming Blade and Green Flame Blade. Also, in a similar vein, we get the Ring of Arcane Synergy, allowing us to, whenever we deal damage with a cantrip, we gain Arcane Synergy, adding our spellcasting modifier to the damage of our melee attacks. Again, Booming Blade and Green Flame Blade. And finally, the Ring of uh, Elemental Infusion. Whenever we deal Acid, Cold, Fire, Lightning, or Thunder damage with a spell or cantrip, we gain an extra D4 of damage to use on our next weapon attack of that element. Again, Booming Blade or Green Flame Blade. It's just free extra damage just for casting cantrips that we already want to cast. Ah, uh, so yeah, that is the build. You'll see from the combat footage now that this build is insane. We went up against a Steel Watcher and a bunch of Flaming Fist Guards, and I think we got hit twice, once from an AoE and once from a critical hit, and that was all the damage that was done to us throughout the entire combat. Meanwhile, we're able to cast Booming Blade, getting a ton of damage off of that thanks to all of our equipment and our attacks, and then being able to move away, forcing the enemy to come towards us, taking the extra damage from Booming Blade. When the enemies grouped up and got really close to each other, we cast Green Flame Blade. When the enemies were at range, we shot them with our gun. We had haste up, we had everything up. We could cast Fireball and do all this other stuff. We had bonus action attacks, extra sneak attack damage, extra chronic damage from withering cut this build's insane it, it is just straight up crazy it's probably from a pure power standpoint one of the strongest builds i've ever made simply because it just does so much damage while making yourself impossible to hit there is so much that this build can do that 
I mean, it's just so fun. I love the theming, I love the combat style, I love the unique use of the cantrips and, like, the fighting style and all that, the way Bladesong interacts with uh, Swashbuckler in a really unique way. I just, I love it. I think it's absolutely great. Now, on to end of video stuff. Again, this is my first modded build as part of a new Sunday series. Uh, so if you want to kind of suggest mods to use or modded builds, feel free to head on over to the Discord where I manage all of that stuff. Uh, we have a ton of fun over there. There's a lot of really interesting discussion about builds, about the game, about other stuff, about D&D in general. And I even have ways to uh, organize a group and actually play on the Discord server if you want to play tabletop as well, or BG3 together. We have multiple ways of doing all that. So feel free to join if you like. But yeah, and I mean... I've really, really enjoyed making this build. I'll be interested to see how this video does. I'm not sure what the general consensus on modded builds for the channel is yet. I don't know if they'll be popular, less popular, more popular. I have no idea. But I'll be curious to see where they go. I have a ton of interesting ideas. I mean, I want to try doing something that uh, Colby from D4 did one time, I think about a year ago, which is mixing Hexblade and Bladesinger. Because I think with the equipment in this game, you could really make that work. And I think it could be super fun. Uh, but I'll save that for another time. We've obviously just done a Blade Singer build, and I have a ton of things to go over. I mean, you saw it in the video. We've got Artificer, Blood Hunter, all the Rogue subclasses, all the Cleric subclasses. Uh, we've got things like, you know, uh, Puff of the Zealot Barbarian that we can work with. Uh, a bunch of Druid subclasses like Stars and Wildfire. There's so much. I'm looking for Monk subclass mod mods that work, because a lot of them haven't been updated. But, you know, I want to kind of continue experimenting with this and see where I can go, because... This is cool. I'm really going to enjoy working with these builds, I think. Anyways, I can feel my voice starting to go. My nose is really backed up for some reason. I think I might have some allergies that are starting to come through with the changing of the seasons, which is lovely. So I will leave you guys here. Thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you all next time.